I was graduating from Stanford University, there was a sophomore there who was in computer science classes just like me, who was in many ways a perfectly average college sophomore. Like many other 19-year-olds, he was really interested in flirting with girls and was trying to figure out ways to do it better. But unlike other 19-year-olds, he built an app. He built an app that made it so that when you sent a message to somebody, it would disappear after they had read it. His name was Evan Spiegel, and the app that he built became Snapchat. Snapchat recently went public as a company called Snap, valued at over $20 billion, which is more than the GDP of Nicaragua. Now, there's nothing wrong with Snapchat. I use it myself. <laughs> but what if I told you that the technology behind Snapchat could also solve some of America and the world's most pressing social problems? That's what I want to talk about here, using technology to solve social challenges. Snapchat is a great example of how people solve the problems that they understand. And when Evan was a sophomore at Stanford, he understood a very specific set of problems and he used the tools at his disposal to solve those problems. In 2017, the people who start software companies tend to have a certain set of backgrounds. They are disproportionately young, they're disproportionately male, they tend to live in cities on the coast, and they tend to have some money. That's part of why there are so many apps and so many companies out there that are trying to make it easier for you to purchase lunch or to call a cab. <laughs> but what if you are a 50-year-old single mother who's living in Kansas, maybe you're on food stamps to support your family, and maybe you struggle to pay your bills? In 2017, you probably have a smartphone. In fact, when you look at the statistics, 70% of Americans who live below the federal poverty line today have access to a smartphone that can access the internet. So who's building the software that meets their needs? This is a picture of the line outside the food stamp office in Brooklyn. I left my job as a product manager at Facebook three years ago to start a software company called Propel that aims to use modern Silicon Valley style software to fight poverty. At the very start of Propel, we spent a lot of time at this food stamp office in Brooklyn trying to learn more about the challenges of applying for food stamps and being low income. One of the things that we learned at the food stamp office is that there are hundreds of people all waiting in line, many of them waiting to see a human social worker and fill out a paper form, and most of them are passing the time with a smartphone in their hand. So in a single snapshot, here's the opportunity. The possibility and capabilities of modern software and modern tech have far outpaced what the social services sector is capable of providing, and as a result, the social services we have in the United States don't feel modern. So that's what Propel aims to solve. We build software that makes America's safety net more user-friendly. So more about Propel in a second, but first, back to Snapchat. One of the things that was actually revolutionary about Snapchat when it came out was it was one of the first uh, first social networks that was really built specifically for the smartphone. Snapchat imagined a world where everybody had a camera in their pocket and asked what kind of social network would that look like. Snapchat doesn't have a website that you can access from your computer because it assumes that everyone's got a phone with a camera. At Propel, we build something called Fresh EBT, which is a free smartphone app that helps people on food stamps to manage their benefits, plan their grocery shopping trips, and save money on food. Like Snapchat, Fresh EBT is a smartphone app and not a website. But we build it as a smartphone app because a lot of our users don't have access to computers at home. And in fact, for a lot of our users, their smartphone is their primary means of accessing the internet. So for both Snapchat and Fresh EBT, these are products that are made possible by the proliferation of smartphones throughout the United States. Here's another example of how a technology makes a variety of different things possible. This is Tinder. Tinder is a very popular online dating platform. And you know, single people looking to pair off is nothing new. But one of the innovations that Tinder brought to the market was that you know, instead of seeing a list of different profiles, it showed you people one by one based on a machine learning algorithm that would try to detect who you might be most interested in meeting. And every time you swipe left and right, that's data that feeds back into the machine learning algorithm to make Tinder smarter about what type of person you might be interested in. But what if you took the machine learning algorithm out of Tinder and applied the foundations to something else? This is Bay's Impact, a nonprofit based in San Francisco that has built a dashboard for hospitals and health systems that uses a machine learning algorithm to classify new entrants into the emergency room by the risk of readmission. 
And so Bayes Impact is applying the same guts of the same machine learning algorithm that Tinder uses to match up singles, and it's using it to make the health system more efficient and more effective. You know, the idea of software companies, especially in Silicon Valley, that solve problems that are not very meaningful has become so popular in society that there's a show on HBO all about it. It's called Silicon Valley, and in this show, the protagonists start a new software company that builds a file compression system. Uh, file compression is taking a large file and making it much smaller, which makes it capable of being stored on a small computer or streamed over a, um, a slow connection. So the core use case that they think of for their software is they want to stream a marketing stunt for the soft drink company. But file compression can also change the way that education works in rural Tanzania. There's a nonprofit called Powering Potential that finds villages in rural Tanzania that don't have access to the internet or even access to electricity, sends them a solar panel and a $35 computer that's chock full of math and science videos from Khan Academy. And it's able to fit all of this onto a $35 computer because modern file compression makes it so that you can take lots of these videos and store them onto a small hard drive. The same technology being applied for one purpose or another. Look, there's nothing wrong with disappearing photos or online dating or silly videos on the internet. If we didn't have those things, life would be really boring. But I think we sell short the possibility of what technology can provide if we see it as just a toy. Modern software is already being used to help low-income Americans put food on the table. It's being used to make our health system more efficient, and it's being used to transform education in Tanzania. Since we can only solve the problems that we understand, if we can broaden our understanding of what problems tech might solve, the tools are already at our fingertips. The technology itself is agnostic. The tools are at our fingertips. Let's use it to solve problems that are really worth solving. Thank you. <laughs>